Yeah, hi everyone. Um, a few people on my channel have requested to see or requested my opinion on the uh, Nokia Lumia 920 Windows Phone device, which I have owned for several months now, about three months. I bought the, one of the first ones that came into the country here, and it was a bit of an impulse buy. I was planning to buy it, but not then. And then it showed up, and it was sold out everywhere, so I, I grabbed it while it was available. I was using a Lumia 800 up till then, which I was very happy with. Uh, but hey, you know, I, I was able to get the latest and greatest, so I did. And that was before Christmas. Um, now, so I've had it for quite a while, and uh, done a few videos about cases and so on. So in this video, I'm going to do sort of a a talk about all aspects of this. This may be more than one video because I tend to go on and on and on. It's not a short video, so if you're going to watch, be prepared to uh, sit through several videos. I may break it up into several videos, which I, I will try to do, but I have to consciously sort of remember to do that and and not overlap the uh, subjects on the areas that I'm talking about. So if I can do that, I will. Okay, uh, I think in this first one I will go over the hardware and maybe some of the operating system which is uh, or maybe the camera I'll decide okay the hardware now well uh, starting from the outside this is this is a I mean I'm not going to go over the specs everyone knows what these are about super high-res screen okay comment on the screen um, this has got a very high resolution screen you know it's it's a tick above the uh, the iPhone Retina display. Um, if you want my opinion on resolution, DPI, I couldn't really care less. If it's above, so long as the DPI is above, you know, 150 or so, it's fine. That's enough. It's sharp. It's readable. Um, it is true that you could read the, you know, on this screen, which is uh, 336 or so DPI. Here's a little icon there, which is an old Windows Phone um, 7 icon, uh, displayed at the shrunk size. That's, I can read the large text, I can read that, I can make out what it says, just showing you how small that is. See, you can, you can see what it says. Those are some share prices and share movements, okay? See there it says $3.63 for Nokia Core, that's horrific. Um, that is, there's my fingernail, oops, that is so tiny, I can't even find anything small enough to demonstrate how small it is, but, um, you know, <laughs> what's here on my desk, you know, there's a USB key, that is super, super tiny, um, normal text is like that. That's nice. A bit smaller than that is fine to read. You don't want to be reading text like that. And the old phone had a 480 by 800 screen. That was about 250 DPI. That was plenty. Plenty. So, as far as DPI is concerned, couldn't care less. They are, all of these phones are super sharp, super high res, compared with your desktop, which is like 92 or 100 DPI and no one was complaining about. These screens are fine in terms of sharpness. Um, the colors on the loom on this type of screen, because it's not an AMOLED screen, it's an LCD. It's basically got a light in the back, which is on all the time, like a traditional LCD. And so the colors are definitely not as strong as they were on the Lumia 800, which had the AMOLED screen. Um, though that really popped the colors, especially with the live tiles and everything, it really, really stood out and it looked really cool and you got used to it after a while and you sort of expected the phone to look like that. It had this kind of artificial look that was quite neat, um, sort of candy look. Uh, this phone, when I got this, I was quite disappointed. I thought, oh, it's totally flat. Um, the most disappointing thing is to go into the themes and look at the tiles and that doesn't com that's not even anything like it looks on the um, 800 on the 800 things really really pop out um, some of the other new Windows phones from Nokia still have an AMOLED screen uh, the 820, the 620 um, but I believe the 720 and the 
520 do not. They're like this. Um, however, once you get used to this, this is actually the more accurate display color-wise. So, and, and as soon as you've start, started using it for a while, you don't, it, it looks bright and colorful. I mean, that looks bright and colorful to me. Look at that. It's bright and colorful, you know. So, that's just, that's just something that's slightly jarring when you come from a phone, a Windows phone that's had an AMOLED display. Um, the other features of the display, the uh, speed, which is what they refer to as the, uh, what do they refer to it as? Some super duper wazo screen, and it's a, it's a high refresh rate. And what they're saying there is that as you go like this, um, you move this up and down very quickly, the rate that it um, refreshes at is high, it's twice as high or something as other screens, and so in theory, or even in practice, as you scroll down at any given speed, there should be twice as many frames visible across it, so twice as many, you know, the resolution, the granularity of the movement will be finer. Um, in real life, that was never a problem on the old phone. If it works quicker on this phone, great. I do recall there were some reviews about the uh, Lumia 900, which had a big display, but it was the old um, 6, you know, 4, 800 by 480. People complained about a very slight lagginess on that screen. There's a chance that it's this this deals with that. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Who knows? Um, nice to have. Um, the resolution is what they call Super HD. It's not 720 by. 1280, I think. I think it's 1280 by 720 is HD, or something like that. And this is 768, 768 pixels down like that. Uh, so it's just an extra bit more, uh, which I understand is the correct 16 by 9 ratio. Um, whatever. Fine. It matches other phones. You know, matches the Lumia um, 800. So that's great things aren't letterboxed. So that's all fine. Uh, the actual brightness of the screen, it has this really strange feature and I'll just see if I can demonstrate it. I'll pull out a key with a little flashlight on it. And in, in bright sunlight, they always go on about the readability of the screen in bright sunlight. Well, what they mean and they go on about the pure black and all that. Oh, that's the other thing. The blacks are not as black on this screen as they are on the 800 on the AMOLED screen. Because again, that AMOLED screen, where there is black, there is no pixel lit. There's no light. So black is black. Whereas on this screen, black is dark pixels, but there's still a light behind it. And what, what uh, Nokia does is they use a couple of polarizers on the screen, which uh, work to stop work to blacken the light as much as possible. Basically remove that as much as possible and it's very effective. Um, but uh, you know at night when you're reading a bed or something you can see the black screen against the uh, you know the bezel of the screen. It's obvious. Uh, any phone that has this type of screen is going to be like that and this will be one of the better ones if not the best in that regard. But again that's something that's different from the, um, the uh, AMOLED screens. So looking at the readability in daylight. One thing they talk about is the super black. Yeah, that's nice. Um, the other thing is the backlight. It comes on very, very strong. So the auto-adjusting backlight brightens itself up. And the whole background, I think it's not just the backlight, but I'm pretty sure the pixels of the display also are made to wash out to allow more of the backlight to show through. Because when you're looking at it, the screen all of a sudden takes on a very strange look for the last couple of steps of brightness and it's very, it tries to be very bright. It's legible, you can see it. It's not accurate by any means, but it, uh, I'm just going to try showing the light. Oh yeah, there we go. I'll see if I can make it um, do that. That certainly brightened it up. Uh, but it's not brightening up. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> yes. There we go, it's doing it. So I'm just going to see if I can run down the brightness here and again okay oops pick that up I'll bring it up close and see if I can make that happy yep, there it goes um, 
Yeah, but it's not. There's there's another step or two of brightness that it can normally do, but um, it's washing everything out now. Oh yes, there we go. Now it's totally washed everything out. I don't know how visible that is, but um, even next to the that profile image up the top, there's some background showing through. It's as if you whack up the um, whack up the midtones, the gamma, very strongly on a screen, and you start to see shadows while it's not burning out the highlights. So it does that. Uh, it looks a bit ugly, and I'll just let that go back down to normal brightness. There it goes. Yep. Yes, I'm convinced that it's actually changing to the display of the of the pixels, not just boosting up the backlight. It's also washing out the um, colors on purpose to get as much light through as possible. It um, it works. It's a bit ugly, but it works. And as far as I'm aware, um, other phones don't do that. This phone does that. So that's interesting. And the readability, anywhere you go, and of course you can't see it, it's not great in daylight, but you can always see it. You can always, you know, see it in the end. That's fine. Um, there is a, I have had a bug. This phone has not had the Oh, see now how dark that is. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm just going to bring this up. Back up to what it was. Somewhere around there. Okay. Yes, I think that's sort of where we were. Um, the... I forgot what I was going to say. Can't remember. Something about the display. I'll have to. I can't. I can't rewind this, can I? Um, if I remember, I'll, I'll address it again. The display. Something about the display. Um, we'll carry on with the uh, hardware. Um, yeah, I can't remember what it was. And uh, I will take it. You may not. You may have noticed, or you may not have noticed, that it is in a case. It's not quite as thick as this. It looks thick. It's not quite as thick as that. And it's because I've got it in a genuine Nokia case, which is identical to that of the uh, 800, but is now also available for the 900. Now it's very tight in this case, so it's hard to get it out. So I left, I put it in and I've left it in. So it hasn't been out of this case since I did a video review of this case uh, for at least a week or two ago, I think. Okay got one corner out and it's very tight okay because the the rubbery material is definitely stiffer than I mean it is just rubbery stuff but it's quite stiff which is great because it really holds its shape perfectly well not like those nasty silicon cases that go all wonky um, check my other videos for um, this review um, I think that case is fantastic. And so we'll get back to the phone. I was using it without a case for two or three weeks. And uh, that was a mistake because, uh, you know, I wanted to use it without a case because it's so nice to have. <laughs> and by then I had discovered that it actually is a, quite a lot more durable than the case on the, uh, the body of the Lumia 800 which was the same stuff, but for some reason the, the, the material, see it stays in perfect order, um, the 800, that's three months old, the 800 would get ch surface changes. The surface would change from rubbing and from stuff, and, and of course that bit there, which on the previous models was plastic, and on this one is uh, something they call zircon or something like that, just some mineral, which is basically um, absolutely rock solid and can't get scratched. Um, same up here. There's, there's almost no way you're going to scratch these buttons for that. So that's really nice material. It's it's funny. It looks It's like a black mirror finish. So it's perfectly shiny, but it's dark, as are the buttons, which suits the black phone very nicely. So that's a really nice part of the finish. Definitely a higher standard feel to it than the, um, than the Lumia 800 had, which was already sort of a premium phone. Right, so now we have it out of the case. Oops, God, silly boy. Um, what else? Is it big? 
of course, that's the big question. <laughs> How big is the phone? Is it too big? Um, I pre prior to this, I used a little tiny. I used the Lumia 800. I had an Android phone of medium size. I used an HTC HD2. That was my biggest phone for a long time. This is certainly the biggest phone I've ever had since um, my original Uniden, which was a not a brick but very large. Um, as far as I'm concerned, something like this that fits in your pocket. If it, I use it in my back pocket, sometimes in my coat pocket. Um, fits in your pocket. It feels solid. It's got a nice solid feel to it. It fits in your pocket um, fine without any trouble and you can use it. You can hold it in your hand. I don't have very big hands. Um, you see, some people I see on, on YouTube have just massive hands. I don't have very big hands. I think this is fine. I have no trouble at all with the weight or the size. And uh, plenty of uh, other reviews have also commented that after holding it for a while. It's just a few of them seem to have a fit about the um, size and weight of it. Um, so no problem with that. I wouldn't care if my next phone was also like this. I was happy to put up with the weight because it had a camera. It had a optically stabilized camera. That was an important thing for me. Um, I knew that it must obviously need that extra thickness for that, and yes it does. Um, it also has this um, charging coil for wireless charging, which also had to fit in there. I have looked inside this and didn't really think it needed the space for that, but it uses it. Um, certainly the phone could be a little bit thinner, I think, but uh, I'm not too worried. I'm sure they're going to put out something nice and svelte um, towards the end of the year. Something made of metal, perhaps. Okay, um, other things I don't like, and I should point out that a review like this, which is a follow-up, is often full of a lot of negative points. Um, that is, and that is going to be the case here, but um, you shouldn't assume that I think anything negative about the phone. I'm pointing out the negatives because those are the things that help people decide whether or not they're going to buy something. If there's something in there that's really important to them, that might be a make-or-break decision. Um, the positives are everything else. Everything I mention specifically as a positive and everything else I don't mention is a positive. Um, so there may be a lot of negatives, but uh, overall the phone is 90% positive. So it's a great phone. Uh, back to it. The things, again, I don't like. <laughs> My 800 had the headphone there and the power, the USB power, under a flap right next to it. Um, the flap was whatever, it was okay, it didn't really bother me, bug me. Um, the headphone sack socket, I did think it was a dangerous place for it because it was so close to the edge, it was very easy to whack it and dent it. However, I really liked enjoyed having both cables together coming out the one, the one place. I can't stand a phone that has a cable out the bottom because if, when I'm reading in bed, I put it on my chest like that. And with the 800, you know, I just put it on my chest. With this one, I have to hold it up. And Or any phone that has sockets down there, you have to hold it up. And that's just completely stupid. So now I have a, uh, one thing out this side with my ear buds in it, and one out this side charging it. Um, so things are coming out both sides. It's, it's irritating. I don't really like that. Um, they really, Microsoft wanted to get people to put this socket down the bottom, the USB socket, because that, of course, is going to be used for accessories so a car charger or audio dock or something like that and that makes sense I mean it's not going to be always perfectly aligned like on the iPhone um, but at least it will always be a standard standard port unlike the iPhone um, as for me hooking things up to this I am using a headset here but otherwise it's all wireless Bluetooth you know everything wireless so that just gets used for charging nothing else um, let's see, I love how it feels, it feels thin, the buttons are nice, everything's good, the, uh, the camera button of course on a Windows phone, having the um, camera button right there so you just go straight into camera mode, that's unbeatable, that's fantastic, um, every phone should have that, I, I do a lot of photography and I, I bought this for the camera 
and having a hardware camera button is fantastic. This whole idea of poking around at a screen, I just think it's okay, but it's not what I want. I want a button there. And being able to launch the phone, the camera, from there is also great. I'll go into the camera software after, later on in another clip. Um, what else about the hardware? Let me just look at my notes. <laughs> oh, the buttons are too bright. Yeah, down here. They're too bright. Uh, <laughs> when you're in bed, these buttons here on the 800, they were initially always too bright, but the, but a software update after that made them sort of go up and down with the uh, with the the light sensor, and they were also quite dim at that point. So it was really that was good. Here it's as if it was still faulty because it's like they're always on full, and it's just they're too bright at night. We're trying to watch a video on this. Those are on bright, so I'm hoping that'll be fixed in an update. It should be. Um, the oh, the case is very hard wearing. I've always said the curve of the glass. One of the um, design features of this phone is this curved bit of curved glass, like uh, the Lumia 800 or the Nokia N9 had. I think the 800 and the N9 are the pinnacle of this particular design. Um, everything since then has lost something slightly of the design. If you're a design purist. And that curved glass around the edge that's ground off, uh, it's very, very slight. It's not nearly as pronounced as on the um, 800 or the N9. It's very slight, and it has this funny, um, you can see that there, it's got this funny uh, plastic flange all the way around it, which is obviously used to, to deal with any you know, machining and tolerance in the um, case when they were doing manufacture. Um, the 800 didn't have that, it was just tightly machined. And the thing is, on the 800 I could shove my fingernail down it, and here on this I could as well, but I'm not going to. Um, there, here you can feel it. So that's um, it's not great design-wise, but you don't really see it. It's certainly not as ugly as on the Lumia 900, where it actually stood out proud of the uh, surface, which was pretty awful, I thought. Um, what else is going on here with the uh, Thing, the vibrator, um, squeaky case, and the vibrator, the um, you know the buzzer in the phone. The 800 sounded great. This one sounds silly. It's got a bad vibrator sound. It sounds like there's loose things in there or something. It's, got, it's just got a farty sort of um, sound. Now it doesn't. I don't really care. But it's, and I'm sure it differs from phone to phone. But uh, this one doesn't sound that great. Um, the Da, 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 da. Buttons at bottom. Squeaky case. You'll find a lot of these 920s, if you grab them like that, top and bottom, and squeeze, I'm pushing down there, squeeze it, you get a squeaking sound just because of the fit. This one doesn't do that, but my wife's does. This one feels good and tight. My wife's is sort of squeak, squeak. Uh, something you won't notice, and then when you figure you find it out, you'll notice it all the time. But it doesn't really matter. Um, the the battery. You'll see in another video of mine on my channel where I've pulled the uh, phone apart because I dropped it. And when I dropped it, it's sort of hard to see. Focus. But uh, on the very tip. Oh, let me just turn off silly autofocus. There we go. Make it all the way small, and then bring it up. See, I dropped this twice on a tile floor, and one nick was there. There you go. Yep, you can see that. And uh, the same thing happened over here, but not as visible. Not really at all. So after a period, um, uh, with one of the dings, I just used a, something something smooth and shiny and just rubbed it down like that. Just rubbed the um, <laughs> rubbed the ding down a bit to flatten it, and the other side I did nothing. And you just rub it like that with your finger, and it basically disappeared. So it was quite neat. Yeah, I dropped it twice. Not really a mark. It's invisible, almost the, the damage. 
Uh, however, the battery inside got really loose, and you could wobble it, and you could hear it, and that was really irritating. So there's a video on my channel uh, where I pull the battery, pull the phone apart, and I put the uh, tighten the battery up, and that's interesting if you want to check that out. Um, so now it's nice and solid, and it's good, and it has slightly improved the buzzing as well. Um, because I think the battery was flopping around with that. Okay. Uh, it also demonstrated that yes, you can you can replace the battery in these quite easily. Obviously, if it um, if it ever fails and needs replacement, two screws and a bit of care, and you've got a new battery in there. So that's nice to know. Okay, I dropped it because I, I had this thing for three months, never dropped it. Or two and a half, two and a half months, never dropped it because I was very careful with it. Okay, then I bought a tablet, a Windows 8 tablet, and because I'm carrying that around, I've dropped this. It's basically fallen out of my pocket a couple of times while I've sat down. That's what happens. It falls out of your back pocket and lands, and that's because I've had a tablet. Normally, I always take it out of my pocket, so that's interesting. It's just a use case thing. If I start to uh, get another PC, end up dropping this one. That's a bit irritating. It's going to darken this so that we can see what's on the screen. Um, what else? Do, 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 about the hardware. I haven't got any more notes about the hardware. The camera I'll talk about separately, and the operating system I'll talk about separately. So I'll wrap up this video and save it. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Let's wrap this one up, and I'll come back with another one. Okay, well thanks for watching this, and just, just look in the, I guess I'll put links in the description or somewhere for the follow-up videos. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.